Hello everyone, Sadly here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very simple, cheap, and easy to build bee farm in your Bedrock Edition worlds. This bee farm is built to be extremely cheap and super quick to throw together in your Minecraft worlds. It can be built any size that you want, either really small for just a small supply of honey and honeycomb, or you can upgrade it as you go on for just a massive supply of honey blocks. It is designed to be efficient in all of the ways that it can be, super easy to build, this bee farm has a lot of design time put into it, and I think it's one of the better methods of farming honey and honeycomb in Minecraft. It doesn't rely on an absolute ton of bottles, so you don't need to mass craft the glass bottles. You also do not need that much redstone either, and you can also fully churn off the redstone of the farm. So this farm can be expanded however long you like. I decided to show a module with eight bee nests, but you could easily have 16, 32, 64. You could loop this thing around around in a U shape. You could zigzag it and have like multiple of these in a row. You can really expand it to be however big you want. It is a very modular and very easy to expand farm. So let's take a look at this bee farm, shall we? It is incredibly simple and straightforward. So of course on the inside here, you got your beehives or your bee nests. It doesn't really matter which one. All of your bees are free to exit into this larger area. I'm giving them a too high and too wide area. That way they have a little bit more room to fly around and they don't bump into each other. This actually allows them to get back into the bee nest much quicker than normal, and that helps increase your rates. We're also using the flowering azalea, so they have plenty of places to get pollen from. That also decreases the time they're out of the hive, gets them back into the hive, making that sweet, sweet honey. You don't need to use flowering azalea, but it is the best way to do it. The dispensers are on top of those, and that is where you are going to have your shears or your glass bottles. This thing gets automatically refilled by our chest minecart. So, this thing is on a timer. It fires, you know, once or twice a minute, and that way we don't need any redstone to read when the beehives are full. This thing is going to be dropping out some glass bottles along with the honeycomb and honey bottles onto the floor in here, as you can see, and then that all gets collected by a hopper minecart and brought up to here. All of your items will be sorted out and put into the chest for you. Any empty bottles will be recycled back into the system and redistributed. We We've also separated out some of the bees, so we're doing sections of four because you can have up to 12 bees in here. If you had both of these cells connected together, then that would allow your bees to get much more confused and that would increase the time that they're spending outside of the hive and sometimes they won't go back into the hive. It's really annoying, so it pays to separate your bees. They're really dumb, so we gotta help them out a little bit. As you're probably aware, there's like a thousand different ways of farming honey and honeycomb in Minecraft and I want to go through a couple couple of the more common designs to showcase some of their pros and cons. That way you understand why I designed today's farm the way that I did. If you're not interested in this part, then like you can skip ahead, but it is good to know. That way you can like make educated decisions on what you're building. So the first design right here is the most common. You read the bee nest with a comparator. Once that reaches a signal strength of five, that activates your dispenser. This is fine for honey. However, if you want to use it for honey, you need nine stacks of bottles in here. That way it always shoots out that honey bottle on the ground for you to collect. If you have any empty gaps in here, that honey is going to stay in there and break your farm. This is fine for honeycomb. It's also very expensive with all of that redstone in the back there and it's very large. Design number two is just an observer reading a beehive with a couple redstone torches. I think this only works on bedrock edition. This is pretty much only for honeycomb, but it also is a little bit expensive if you want to build a lot of these. Method number three is only reading from a single beehive, so you would have an entire array of beehives, maybe like eight or ten or twenty or however many, and then as soon as the one on the end gets full of honey, then you harvest all of them. This is incredibly inefficient, and it's a lot slower lower than doing it pretty much any other way. It is a lot simpler and it's a lot cheaper on the redstone. You could also switch out the comparator for a observer and that would make the farm activate a lot more often, but it still has the same problems. You could also get really fancy with your individual modules. So this is from my previous bee farm tutorial and this is like the smart-ish way of doing it. It's very resource intensive, however. So we're reading from the beehive there whenever it reaches a single strength of five. We put one bottle into this one that gets filled up with honey and then shot onto the ground. And then we put one more glass bottle in there from the top. So it requires very little bottles, but if you ever happen to run out of bottles, it kind of breaks the system and you got to go back in there 
and kind of fix it, which is not a good thing at all. Now, today's method is very straightforward indeed. We're not reading anything having to do with the beehive, and all the redstone that we have is just a dispenser facing downwards. So, of course, this is an extremely cheap farm. Per cell, you only need a tiny amount of resources, and then there's some additional resources for the rail lines and the hopper clock and the item filter, but that's all pretty basic when it comes to these types of bee farms. You can also fully churn off of this type of farm without having to adjust really any of the redstone. You could hook it up to churn on and off automatically even. It also doesn't require that many bottles to function either. The main con of this farm is that it is constantly running, so it's activating twice a minute or once a minute, however you set up the clock. However, I think this is a pretty fine trade-off, and it actually does increase your efficiency overall anyway. It's also not a very laggy farm because it's a very simple redstone circuit that's hardly doing anything at all. So hopefully you understand a bit more behind the methodology of harvesting bees. It seems like an incredibly simple concept on the surface, but there's a lot of mechanics and stuff that can go into it, and I've spent way too much time just thinking about this stuff. Overall, I feel like the design I'm showing you in today's video is the cheapest, one of the most efficient, the most lag efficient, and overall just one of the best ways of doing it that I've seen. Real quick, a huge thanks to Just Justin for requesting today's video. Justin is a patron of ours over on Patreon, and they get to request videos like this basically whenever they want. If you want to help support the channel and get benefits of your own, like joining our fan servers, then check out the Patreon page. Link is everywhere. And a huge thanks again to Justin for requesting today's video. And let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? For your convenience, there is a materials list down in the description of the video. That way you know everything you need to build with. The build area area is going to be 17 blocks wide, 5 blocks deep, it's going to be 4 blocks above the ground, and 2 blocks below the ground. So this is the actual layer that you're going to be standing at when you're accessing your chest and looking at your bees, and then you're going to need some area beneath you for a little bit of the redstone and the rails. This is the layer that you're going to be standing at, it's the same layer as your bees, you got easy access to your chest where you put in all of your bottles, and your output chest where you get all of your loot. To start building, we're going to go to the lower left corner of our build area, go up by one and over by three, place in yourself two regular rails right there, and then we need nine powered rails to the side of it. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Place in yourself a solid block right there, and then fill in yourself all powered rails in that area. We're going to go ahead and place in ourselves a regular rail right there, and then two solid blocks up like so. And then you want yourself two more regular rail like so. Place in yourself a double chest right here, a hopper going into the back of it, and a hopper facing into that right there. Now go to the back side of this and we need to place in ourselves a solid block right here, a comparator, and then a solid block right there. Two pieces of redstone dust going down. Break out these two blocks and these two blocks. Place in yourself a repeater right there. And then a redstone torch on this face right here. That's going to make an item filter for our farm. So we're going to place in ourselves four filler items in those back slots. And then four regular items like our honey bottles or our honeycomb in the front slot of this chest. That way all of our items that we actually want will go into there. And all of our glass bottles will go off to the rest of the system. Go around to the back side of the build, we need to place in a solid block right there, and then a solid block right there. Get in yourself a temporary block, and then a hopper facing into that, a hopper facing to the side of that one, and another hopper right there. You can then break this temporary block. We need ourselves a piece of powered rail right here, and then a solid block right there like so. Go over to this side, and now we need in ourselves another piece of powered rail, a block right there, and then two blocks up in those orientations. Place in a regular rail, and then two powered rail right there. And now we need to put ourselves a lever right here to power all of that powered rail. We're going to go over to the left side over here, place in a solid block right there, a lever on it, power that, then place in yourself a piston, redstone block, and a piston facing the opposite direction. You need a solid block right here, comparator on top of that, and then a redstone dust there. Same thing on the other side, and then a temporary block in the middle, a hopper going into that, and then another hopper right here facing into it. This is going to be your hopper clock, which controls the entire farm and controls how often it activates. We're going to go ahead and put ourselves a repeater right here, an observer facing that repeater, solid block behind it, piece of redstone dust, and then a repeater on four ticks. We need this going into a couple of solid blocks going up like so, and then just a few pieces of redstone dust right here. 
place in one more solid block right there, and that is the activation line for your chess minecart and your hopper minecart. You can place those in now, so you need a hopper minecart right here for your item collection, and then a chess minecart right here to distribute all of your glass bottles. Now go to the back side of the build over here, place in yourself a glass block on top of that redstone, and then two solid blocks right here. Extend this solid block line all the way across the farm until you line up with that original lever, and then you need redstone dust on top of all of that like so. Go ahead and stand down here, and we need to place a dispenser are facing downwards on all four of these blocks skip a block in the middle and then four more dispensers facing downwards and that is the centerpiece of our two b cells so now we're going to place the three blocks up the middle like so four hoppers on top of each of those and on top of each of those and then get your powered rail place that all over all of this and then you need two solid blocks on the end here and a couple more pieces of powered rail just to fill that all in. Grab yourself a lever, place it on the back side of that block, flick that, and that's going to power most of your rail. And to finish up the farm, all you need to do is place in yourself a floor of flowering azalea leaves on top of all of your rails right here in front of your four dispensers. This does need to be the flowering azalea leaf types. So you get these from the azalea trees. And then we just need ourselves a wall of glass on the left side right here, some more flowering azalea leaves on the front of the farm, some glass wall in the middle, and then another flowering azalea on the floor, on the front of the wall right here, and then some more glass on the right side. And now we just need to put a roof on it, so get yourself some glass blocks and put those in all of these locations and all of these locations as well, just to keep in all of your bees. If you don't have any azalea leaves, you can just put some two tall flowers inside of the farm like that, and that'll work perfectly fine for the bees, although it won't be as efficient, I don't think. Now we're going to loop around to the back side of the build and place in one final lever right here on this block, just to power the final couple pieces of powered rail. And you can also put a double chest right here for additional bottle storage if you really feel like it. There's one last minute improvement that you can make to your farm if you are using it for honey bottles. So what we're doing is we're making sure that there is only one bottle in these dispensers at all times. That way they get filled up with honey and then shot out and they don't stay in the dispenser. And this increases the rate at which you actually get honey out of the farm because otherwise it could get stuck in those dispensers until it's randomly shot out at another time. So this is a super easy modification. All you need to do is read from this redstone dust right here of an observer send that up and then at the end over here we're parking our chest minecart and having ourselves a four tick repeater power that piece of powered rail if you have a very large farm you might need to add more items into your hopper clock that way the chest cart sits over here long enough to get filled up with twice as many bottles as are in your system the easy solution to this is just to have a bottle filler on either side of the farm so you put in bottles over there and you put in bottles over there that way you never run out in the middle and with that that is basically all the optimizations you can make to this style of farm the final thing to do is to actually get yourself some bees so I would recommend finding some in the wild or something and then braiding them up using some flowers. That'll give you a bunch of baby bees. Make yourself a whole bunch of bee nests and make sure that all of these have exactly three bees in them for optimal efficiency with your farm. It's going to be kind of hard to tell exactly how many bees are in there, but if you separate these out into their own individual rooms, you can see how many pop out of there when it turns daytime. So break the hives with a silk touch tool and that'll give you a beehive full of three bees. I would highly recommend doing this last part during the night time, that way the bees don't instantly leave their beehive as soon as you place it down. So break into the farm and then place in your four beehives right here, full of all of your bees and seal that up and then you need to do that on this side over here as well. You'll hear all the buzzing and as soon as it becomes the daytime, all of your bees will pop out of there. And there we go, they've started popping out of there. So they're basically going to start pollinating immediately and they're going to be pollinating very quickly because they have such a good access to the flowering azalea. Now they're going to be able to get back into their hives a lot quicker because they have ample room to fly around. They're not going to be bumping into each other as often Often, and that's going to mean that they spend more time inside of the hive actually producing the honey. 
So the final, final thing to do is to actually put some items in your hopper clock here on the back. I would recommend putting maybe about 32 items in there and then you unflick your lever right here and that is going to activate your farm every now and again. You also need a couple solid blocks right here to the side of that hive just to keep items from flying out of the farm. There's two different ways of using this farm. The first way is for honey and the other way is for a honeycomb. So if you want to use it for honey, all you need to do is fill up this chest minecart with some bottles if you want to use it for a honeycomb, then all you do is put a bunch of shears in there, enough to make sure that each dispenser has a couple of shears. If you're using it for honey, this item filter right here needs some honey bottles in it, and if you're using it for honeycomb, then you don't even need the item filter at all. You can just remove all of that and save yourself a little bit of redstone. So this is the base size of the farm. If you want to build it any larger, it is incredibly simple. All you do is build more of these cells right here with the four dispensers beehives and flowers you can build as many of these in a row as you want and then all you got to do is just extend out the you know powered rails as far as you want to you can power them on either side using some levers you can bring out this upper rail line as far as you need if you need additional power just place a solid block of lever above it like so and then this red sun on the back literally just gets extended as far out as you want you can put a repeater at every section where there is a break that way you don't run out of signal strength that is it. Extending this farm is extremely simple and straightforward. All the quote-unquote complicated redstone is on the right side of the farm and in the hopper clock over here. So there isn't anything particularly special. Expanding the farm to the left is super easy. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's Ben Rock Edition tutorial, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can. If you enjoyed today's video, then of course consider dropping a like as it helps out the video on the channel a ton. If you're new here, then maybe consider subscribing. That way you don't miss a future tutorials. And otherwise, I'll see you guys down in the comment section in the next one. Thank you for watching, and then there was silence.